Good afternoon and welcome to Clinical Pearls. I'm your host, Tracy White. I am delighted to have Drs. Allison Shorten and Sharon Hawley here to discuss midwifery. And remember, you can join our discussion by typing your questions into the chat box. We will answer as many questions as we can during our 30-minute segment. So I'm going to have Drs. Allison and um, Sharon introduce themselves. So Allison, let's start with you. Thank you. So I'm Alison Shorten. I'm a professor here in the School of Nursing. I chair our Department of Acute Chronic and Continuing Care, and I direct the Office of Interprofessional Curriculum here at UAB. I'm an Australian midwife, and I've been a midwife for over 30 years now, and I love all things midwifery. Great. And Sharon, please tell us a little bit about yourself. Hi. Yes, I'm the director of the UAB School of Nursing Nurse Midwifery Pathway that's being relaunched this fall, 2022. I'm very excited to be here to talk about midwifery today. I'm really excited to get to speak with both of you. Um, I think everyone, including myself, would love to know how each of you decided to pursue this career. So let's begin with Allison. What made you decide that you wanted to be a nurse midwife? To think back a bit because it was quite a while ago but I can still remember to this day as a nursing student in my rotation for maternity care and I was fortunate enough to go to a fabulous hospital called Shellhaven Hospital shout out for the Shellhaven midwives in Australia and um, I witnessed a birth and prior to that I'd been learning all about care in pregnancy and the incredible role that midwives can play in making a difference to the experiences of women and um, their families and you know making a really positive difference in in their lives and so I was hooked and I'll say that's quite some time ago now but um, when I think about the the privilege of being a midwife um, that holds today. It's really interesting. My first experience seeing a birth did not lead me down that pathway. So I'm thankful that it had a different effect on you. Um, Sharon, tell us a little bit more about how you discovered that passion for midwifery. Well, it actually starts way before I went to nursing school. So my first child, um, my husband was in the Air Force at the time and we had uh, our first child, uh, Amanda, in a normal military hospital in Texas. And the experience was kind of, I just felt like I was kind of on a conveyor belt of people, if you will, just sort of a number, not an individual. Yeah. My second child that we gave birth to was actually in England. My husband had been stationed over there. And um, I used the British system and they utilize nurse midwives or midwives much more heavily in their healthcare system than in America. I wasn't familiar with midwives and what they did until that time. And the experience was so profound in my life that it started leading me down the path toward eventually becoming a nurse midwife. Wow, that's amazing. Um, can you tell us, Sharon, a, a just a brief historical perspective about the role. I think that comes from your experience personally even, but how did it begin and then how did it develop into what it is today? So midwifery has been around probably since people started giving birth. You know, it was um, typically women with women, which is what actually midwife means, women with women, um, and helping to facilitate birth. Often they were members of the community. They were highly respected members of the community for the most part. Um, they had usually had children of their own and understood caring for a child and, and that sort of thing. Now, one thing to understand is that historically, physicians actually studied midwifery once medical training started developing. And they didn't start um, training in obstetrics actually until about the 1930s. They always studied midwifery. So it's kind of fascinating to me how that has sort of evolved into um, something that sounds like it's old fashioned and yet midwifery has been around forever. Yeah, that historical perspective to me is so interesting. I had no idea about how physicians trained in that way first. So it's, I think that's so interesting. Um, 
Allison, having been a nurse midwife in Australia, as you mentioned, you have a really unique perspective about this role from a global perspective. Um, and I know that there are some global differences. Could you tell us a little bit about those differences? Hmm. Yeah, Australian healthcare generally, the Australian healthcare system is quite different to the healthcare system in the United States. And um, Australian midwives are very much within the mainstream care in, in pregnancy and birth and, and the postpartum. So women in Australia, when they're childbearing, will be expecting that um, care will be provided by midwives. And in other countries around the world, I've been fortunate that midwifery has taken me around the world and to look at different systems and models of care. Um, and midwives are very much integrated into many healthcare systems around the world. So it means that, that women do have access to that midwifery care and focused um, that care around pregnancy, birth and the postpartum. So there's, there are some differences in, in the way midwives in Australia may practice um, in comparison to the United States. We probably have more in common than we do have differences. But in terms of access to care and access to midwives, I would say women in Australia have much greater access and an expectation that midwives will be providing their care. And I think that goes along with Sharon's experience having given birth in England. Is, is that you would agree with that, Sharon? Yes, absolutely. So the midwives that would care for you um, in England, that was pretty much most of the obstetrical care that was provided unless you had a complication, in which case at that point you would see the physicians. So actually in a lot of our, um, you know, it, what we would consider our countries that we would equate ourselves similarly to, which is, you know, a lot of Europe, European countries. Nurse midwives are integrated quite heavily into those systems. It's really the US and Canada that has it kind of flipped. They have here we have more obstetricians than midwives. But in most other countries, it's midwives who really are doing the majority of care. I, that's really interesting. And and I, I want to ask why without touching on some hot button topics or anything uncomfortable, but is there a reason that you can pinpoint why that's happened with, you know, without getting, like I said, into any heated discussions sure. about it? Sure. Um, so yeah, you, have to, you have to understand the development of midwifery in America. Uh, it is different to what happened in other countries. And so, you look at the European system and Australia, I sort of include in all that and New Zealand and those sorts of countries. Um, really, they took midwifery and they developed training around that and incorporated it into the healthcare system. So those workers who already had experience and training were integrated into the more modern healthcare system. In America, we kind of traditionally, um, if you think about colonial times into sort of, you know, the 1800s or so, midwives really were not receiving training. Any who came over from the European countries typically had some training, but the people who were here were typically doing the best they could as community helpers in their, you know, town, cities, that sort of thing. Um, and the medical establishment here didn't welcome midwifery into the you know the healthcare system in the same way and so that's why you see a, a little bit difference in the way that midwifery developed here interesting so allison can you tell us about the different types of midwifery so i understand that there are different certifications um and in, in maybe the difference between things that the public might have, her, have heard of, like a doula, for example. Just briefly tell us what the differences in those are. I probably should defer to Sharon to talk about the different types of midwives in the United States. Um, okay. In, in, in the Australian fine. perspective, we'd, we'd have our um, registered midwives and um, majority of the the midwives in Australia are, are qualified through our educational programs and are registered midwives with a small number of independent um, providers. And um, in Australia, there are very few doulas, although that is probably increasing in some areas, but 
Um, midwives provide the care during labour um, in a one-on-one, -on -one, hopefully, <laughs> continuity sort of care model and um, or in a hospital system where you have midwives working as the staff of the maternity unit. So in labour, we wouldn't necessarily have a, a doula there. Um, the midwife would be supporting um, care in the labour, whereas in the United States, um, a doula would provide supportive care. I'm going to defer to Sharon now to talk a little bit more about doula care in the United States because um, she knows a lot more about that than I do. <laughs> Yeah, I think it's important to um, kind of tag on to what Allison is saying regarding other countries. They pretty much have a standard midwife track. It's one track. So you're a midwife, you're a registered midwife, that's what you do. In America, we have multiple different pathways and it can get confusing. And the public, I think, um, really has a minimal understanding in general of what those different pathways are. So I think it is good to talk about it here. So for example, we have certified nurse midwives and um, that is what I am. And that's what our educational program will be here uh, in uh, Alabama and UAB School of Nursing. We um, are nurses first and we are um, able to practice in all 50 states as long as we've passed our certification. We have a national certification. All of us have graduate degrees um, and you know, at this particular education program will be a master's level, but some are doctoral level at um, the time that they graduate. We also have certified midwives, which they are also trained in the same way that certified nurse midwives are. They pass the same certification. They can be um, practicing uh, very similar um, scope of practice in the States. However, they do not have a nurse background and currently certified midwives are not able to be licensed in Alabama. They're actually only licensed in about six or seven states at this moment. Now, here in Alabama, we also have certified professional midwives. They go through a um, training program and they are certified by a different certification body, North American Registry of Midwifery or Midwives, I forget the name. Um, they are not licensed in every state. Their scope of practice is slightly different than a certified nurse midwife. So for example, certified nurse midwife, mm -hmm. we are able to do much more um, with regard to well woman care, uh, gynecological care, like uh, pap smears, well woman exams, as well as pregnancy birth. And we can take care of newborns up to 28 days. Um, you know, again, like the slide is showing, and we can also do sexual reproductive health, family planning, and we are considered primary care providers. I would say we're primarily primary care providers more on the wellness spectrum of things, but we can do some general, you know, primary care. A certified professional midwife has a scope of practice that is really around pregnancy, birth, and postpartum care, and a little bit of newborn care as well. And then um, finally, to clear up <laughs> or not clear up the final pathway in America of midwives, there's also the lay midwives. They really apprentice with one another. There's not really a certification. Um, if there is any licensure, it's pretty limited in the United States. Um, there might be one or two states that allow some kind of permit, but um, that's, that's pretty much it here in America. It's a little confusing sometimes. Yeah, I had no idea that there were so many pathways to to be a nurse midwife or the differences in each. So thank you for, for that. I think I shared with you in our prep meeting that I had recently gone to a nurse midwife who is also a, a nurse practitioner, a family nurse practitioner here, and for the first time, and it was the most comprehensive, amazing exam and not just a physical exam, but just the way that she spoke to me and and just across the board, I, I love her. So <laughs> I shout out to all the nurse midwives who are practicing like that because it wasn't just delivering babies because that's not why I saw her. Um, so uh, the training that you guys have is is really amazing and your scope is is really incredible and kind of leads me into the next, um, the next thing I want to talk about, and I'll let Allison take this one. What's the 
data say about how this role positively affects public health? Why do we need nurse midwives in practice? We know from the evidence around the world that midwifery care can improve outcomes and, and health outcomes, birth outcomes. We know that when midwives are integrated fully into the healthcare system, we know that we're, when they're well trained, that the rates of infant mortality can reduce, the rates of breastfeeding can increase, the rates of physiological birth can increase. Um, that's just a few of the things that, that can happen in a, um, in a country when midwives are fully integrated into care and are able to practice within their scope of education. And that's, that's a really important um, issue for us here in, in Alabama and in the United States. And this evidence has been around for a very long time. And um, that's one of the, one of the you know, important things that when we think about the models of care we're providing, that it is underpinned by evidence and evidence speaks volumes that midwives can improve health outcomes for mothers, babies and families. Sharon, do you have anything to add to that? Yeah, I think um, there's lots more information out there now about the impact that having nurse midwives into a healthcare system uh, than even when I graduated. So, for example, um, there is a slide I think we can pull up where it shows the states that have integrated nurse midwifery much more into their healthcare systems. It's also correlated with better outcomes for both moms and babies. So for example, this is a map of neonatal mortality. The ones that are surrounded in green outline have fairly good uh, outcomes for their neonatal mortality overall. The ones that are outlined in red, you can see they don't really have as good of results. Um, and that red means that there are fewer nurse midwives in those systems. These maps are, um, I forget the site it comes from, but there's all kinds of um, overlay with things like maternal mortality, breastfeeding rates, C-section rates. They all look about the same as this map. So the more you have a, an environment where midwives are welcomed and incorporated more into the healthcare system, it's also associated with better outcomes. Now, do I think that nurse midwives are the answer? No, it's part of an answer. And to develop this workforce um, in this state is gonna be really important if we want to turn that red into a green. It looks like we need a lot of help in the East and South, East Coast and Southeast especially. And um, that's really interesting is and this may be a, just an answer, no, but is there a reason why this, that is a problem more in the Southeast and on the East Coast on that map? Is, are there any things you can pinpoint? Or too many things maybe to name, I'm not sure. Well, it, it is a complex issue, and if it was easy to solve, it probably would have been solved, right? right. So um, I would say that it is a complex um, system of things that create an environment that make it easier to practice as a nurse midwife. So I'll give some examples, but these are not the only things. You know, look at those states that are doing well and what is their scope of practice for their certified nurse midwives and for their advanced practice nurses? Are they able to practice full scope or are they, um, you know, under supervisory or collaborative agreement type of settings. Um, look at those states that accepted the Medicaid expansion money and did something with it and those that did not. You know, you have to look at a whole set, a whole range of things. You know, it's if it was easy, as I said, we'd have fixed it already. True, true. You mentioned integrating the nurse midwives into the healthcare system. So how does that translate into where you would practice as a nurse midwife? What different settings? Yeah, so as a nurse midwife, uh, I would say the vast majority of us do our outpatient clinic time, you know, in any office uh, that you would normally seek care in. Before our um, pregnancy, uh, I mean, uh, excuse me, our ch 
childbirth, labor, birth, postpartum care, immediate postpartum care, you're going to find the vast majority of us actually doing that care in the hospitals. However, some of us do work in birth centers and more birth centers across the United States are opening, so you'll see us there. And some of us do births at home, but I would say the vast majority of us do the births in the hospital. Uh, Sharon, I'll stick with you for just a minute because I know that you are actively practicing. So can you describe a day in the life of a nurse midwife like yourself? Yeah, so um, some days during the week you might be seeing patients in the office and the clientele, I might go from doing a well woman physical exam and check to the next person who's pregnant and, you know, I'm doing lots of education and teaching about pregnancy. You know, we're assessing for all kinds of risk factors, both with well woman care and with pregnancy and birth. There's a lot of teaching involved, um, patient teaching. We like to empower our patients with information so that they can make the best decision for themselves and their families. You know, we um, really believe in the shared decision-making model and trying to um, help them make the best choice. So that, that's, you know, the clinic side. And the inpatient side, you know, working in the hospital or in the birth center, for example, you know, what I might be doing is caring for somebody who's having a baby, you know, in labor. I might be caring for somebody who's recently had a baby before they go home, uh, caring for their newborn if I'm in certain hospitals. Or, you know, if we're doing birth at the home, we may be doing home visits and um, coming back and forth to see the mother and the baby for a while. Sounds like a, a very interesting, diverse um, kind of work day. You never know what you're going to see, basically. That's um, true. Allison, uh, let's switch to you for just a minute. And I would like to know what you think the characteristics are that a person would need to be a successful midwife. Well, you just mentioned that every day can be different. There's a wide variety. So being able to um, be flexible and embrace the unexpected, um, calm and um, a good leader and um, a good collaborator, a great listener, um, a wonderful coach. I think there's a lot of coaching and an educator. I think that there is an opportunity to, to teach in every aspect of midwifery. And in fact, that's one of the things that um, also drew me to the profession because there's a huge opportunity um, to teach um, across the continuum of, of childbearing. And um, so to really enjoy that is going to be important. But I think um, being able to cope with uncertainty at times and... Um, and really have a positive outlook and a passion um, for this area of work. Sharon, I know that not every birth goes the way it's planned. Every, unfortunately, every day is not a happy day. How do you deal with those days and with the stress and perhaps burnout um, while you're supporting that family? Well, I think it's always important for me personally, to feel that no matter what that family is going through, no matter what that patient is going through, that I'm there with them and supporting them and offering them as much comfort and options as I can. And always keeping in mind their safety. You know, so when I have a patient who's going through a, an experience like, for example, a miscarriage or receiving bad news, you know, this is a really tough time. Sometimes I sit there and cry with them. Um, but, you know, I have a job to do. I have a job to be there to take care of them. I can't fall apart, you know, but I can participate with them in the grief. However, it's my job to ensure that their plan of care gets safely carried out and that their wishes are taken into account in any plan that's made. You know, and then I might have the next patient might be, 
you know, a complete opposite emotional situation where maybe they just found out they're pregnant and they've been trying for a few years and they had almost given up and they're so excited. So you do have to have the ability to adjust and be there emotionally present for whatever that particular patient needs at that moment. And I will say sometimes, some days it's really, really hard, but most days it's a great job. And, you know, I, I might come home tired, but I'm usually um, very excited about, you know, the care that I've given that day and the people that I've seen and what their stories are. I love that. It sounds like it's just an amazing experience, even though it might be an emotional roller coaster. Um, Allison, what are some of the challenges facing nurse midwifery today? Well, I, I think it, it it depends on where you're located. <laughs> in terms of midwifery today in the United States, it's building our workforce and um, looking at ways to develop models of care that meet the needs of the communities and the populations we're working with. From an international perspective, I think, again, it's about um, ensuring that midwives are integrated into care around the world, that there's access to to high quality education and training for midwives and that they're able to practice within their scope and within their, their education and expertise. And so it is something that we work on constantly to ensure that um, we have midwives in the places that they need to be. And that's why we're so excited about our nurse midwifery program here at UAB because that's all about growing our workforce and meeting the needs um, for women in Alabama and beyond. Mm -hmm. Sharon, where are some other ways that you are facing these challenges? And please name any others that you that you thought of. Well, um, you know, I think part of what we have to do in these areas that need more midwives is grow clinical sites where we can practice hire our nurse midwives that we're going to educate when they graduate we want them to stay here we want them to work here you know alabama really um, needs this workforce i will say that um, over the last 20 25 years since i graduated from the first midwifery program at uab till now we've only lost our obstetrical services and, and it's not a pretty picture. This particular slide can sh shows you where the red is, is where obstetrical services were being provided at the time in 1980. And then you can see in uh, 2019, the red has you know really significantly drawn back. Many of the rural hospitals have had to close their obstetrical units so that deliveries are not taking place in those rural hospitals as much. Um, many towns have lost their obstetrical providers. And when I say obstetrical providers, it's not just nurse midwives, it's also um, physicians. And our physician colleagues who are out there doing this work are often more likely to be located in bigger towns and cities than they are in these rural areas. And yet the need is very high in those rural areas. This particular slide is up on the screen now. It's showing um, our obstetrical provider deserts in green. And if you kind of can tell where Alabama is, there's a significant area of our state that's actually an obstetrical desert. If we were able to increase our workforce and get people into those areas doing some of the care that's needed, we might see a quick um, you know, improvement in our maternal and neonatal morbidity and mortality rates. Those pictures paint a, a, well, they're just a little bit shocking to me. I had no idea. At first I thought the initial one with the red was opposite. Um, so uh, just a surprising decrease there in those numbers. So I'm a little bit shocked. Um, so let's, if, if we can, we've got just a couple minutes before we have to wrap up, but I'd love for each of you to share, um, well, let's, I'm sorry, first let's have Allison um, share just some resources or websites that 
uh, people can go to who might be interested in learning more about midwifery and how to uh, pursue that pathway as a career? Well, certainly the American College of Nurse Midwives website is an excellent place to go. Um, if, if you're interested in our programs for midwifery, of course, um, UAB School of Nursing, we'll be able to provide the link there for our new nurse midwifery pathway. Um, I think in terms of the things we were talking about today as well, if you're interested in reading more about an international perspective on midwifery, there's the Lancet Midwifery series. We can provide a link to that. Um, it's very important um, document um, in terms of the research that underpins the things we're talking about today, just midwifery being a vital solution to the challenges that we face in, in outcomes for, for mothers and babies. Um, they're the ones I can, I can recommend, um, at least initially, and of course there are many others that we could include. Thank you. Um, Sharon, do you have any other resources uh, that Alison well, didn't mention? Yeah, I think it's also important to mention that the American College of Obstetricians and Gynecologists recognizes the collaborative nature of working with certified nurse midwives and obstetricians and recognizes our profession as an individual profession. It is um, separate from physician care, and but it is um, something that we should be working together. And I think that that's important for many people who may not realize that we don't see ourselves in competition. We see ourselves as, as collaborating. Um, as far as other resources, one of the other things that somebody might be interested in is looking at the World Health Organization and what they have to say about midwifery. For example, um, in a very recent report that they released, they said that now they're talking globally, but there is a shortage of 900,000 midwives across the globe. And if we were able to educate and fill those 900,000 spots, we could re reduce um, maternal mortality and neonatal mortality quite significantly. I think it was something like 80%, I forget the exact number, but it was something that sort of blew my mind. And I, I think to myself, you know, the United States sort of needs to get on board with this and recognize that if the World Health Organization is saying we need more midwives, then, you know, What's what's the deal here? Why aren't we doing this here? I would agree, absolutely. Uh, I'm going to end it uh, with Allison because I think I got your takeaway. That was a very uh, a, a strong way to end um, with you, Sharon. There, but um, Allison, is there one takeaway that you would leave us with today? When I, when I think about um, midwifery, I think about the importance of relationship-based care. And midwives are all about building relationships and continuity of care and carer. Um, collaboration is very important. In, interprofessional collaboration is really important in terms of, you know, from education to practice. And, and that is certainly the case in um, maternity care. I would say the impact of care provided by midwives and um, provided during pregnancy, birth, postpartum, lasts a lifetime. So the things that we're doing um, to develop our models of care um, are so important across the lifespan. And so it's a very exciting um, part of healthcare to be involved in. Well, thank you so much, both of you. What an amazing conversation. I know there's so much more that we could have talked about had we more time, um, but I think unfortunately we are out of our time for today. Um, so again, thank you so much for joining us. Um, again, such an interesting discussion. And I wanna thank everyone who watched today and we will see you next time on Clinical Pearls. If you liked this video, please remember to like and subscribe and click the bell icon to get instant notifications when we release new videos. Thanks for watching.